<laughs> Care to get you in? Huh? <laughs> I'm not funny. <laughs> don't, don't laugh. Yes, you're not crazy. I actually decided to get off my lazy ass and make a video. And yes, another part of the reason I waited so long to make this video in particular is because I had high hopes that Metal Gear Online might actually have some redeeming qualities worth talking about. And guess what? It doesn't! So, let me talk about the part of the game that I actually wanted to play last year, which in turn I also reluctantly had to give money Konami to do so. The Campagon! The single player! The only part that matters. Was it good? Yeah, it was pretty good. Not anywhere near as good as I wanted it to be, but yeah. Pretty good. Like many other memers out there, I was insanely hyped to play Metal Gear Solid 5. The only thing I can think of that comes anywhere close to being similar to how hyped I was, was the release of World of Warcraft Burning Crusade back in 2007. So, I was prepared. I was ready to play the fuck out of MGS 5 and get right to making a video. Already had a script written, because at that point, I was honestly convinced that there was no possible way that it could be anything less than amazing. I thought it could only be perfect. <laughs> but yeah, uh -huh. it's totally wrong there, because it ain't perfect. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Nothing's perfect. Metal Gear Solid 5 Phantom Pain has problems. And now I know a lot of people are going to instantly assume that I'm just talking about how the game is unfinished. And even though that is true, that's not entirely what I'm talking about here. Because see, at its core, Metal Gear Solid 5 is actually still an extremely polished, well-designed, fun game to play. But there are some design choices that I personally just don't understand. Like, for instance, why did Kojima get rid of healing items like rations, instant noodles, like all that stuff? This is going to be the last Metal Gear game made by Kojima, so why does he suddenly just get rid of something that's been a staple of this series for the past, I don't know, like 25 years? It's just such a weird thing to remove because, like, the box is still there, and it's even more ridiculous and awesome now than it was in previous games. It used to be the joke item, but now it protects you from bullets and serves as a viable, if not the most effective and efficient item in the game. It's like Metal Gear... It's like, it's like Metal Gear Solid manages to pull off this setting that manages to feel extremely grounded in reality, but, but still pull this insane, zany shit out of its ass. Which leads me into my next point, boss battles. They were a massive letdown for me, and a majority of the time just felt totally underwhelming. You fight the same group of four skulls multiple times, and the only thing that really changes in the latter half of those encounters is that they have armor. Sure, the first time I fought them, I was like, oh, oh, oh. But after that, when you have to fight them for the third time onward, it just thought to myself, oh, again? That initial Salanthropus stealth section you do when you're rescuing Huey was like crazy hype and made it feel super menacing. So when I finally got to the actual fight, I was sweating buckets, running, oh god, it's finally happening. Oh, here we go. Oh. And then you literally just shoot rockets at it for 10 minutes and it falls over. Okay. Remember in Peace Walker? How you could blow up all the individual parts of those Metal Gears? And how destroying those individual parts actually made the rest of the fight different? This fight was nothing like that. There's no strategy whatsoever. Solanthropus is just like a yellow cake rocket sponge. Oh, you want to know another thing that Peace Walker had that MGS5 doesn't? Go up. Maybe I'm asking a little too much here, but some form of cooperative play was a feature I was honestly expecting from the game. The fact that it didn't have it in any way, shape, or form was just, it was just disappointing. I mean, like, a majority of these boss fights might not be all that great, but I can tell you now, being able to do something, anything with your friends instantly makes that thing more fun to do. I think the closest I ever got to actually interacting with my friends in this game was visiting their FOBs. I mean, hey, look, we're here together on a deck, but we can't actually do anything. If either of us knock one another out, you just get kicked out of the session. So like, what's the fucking point of being able to visit each other's FOBs anyways? The only FOBs I ever invaded were base development platforms, as they always had an abundance of resources. And even when I invaded a different, larger platform, nothing was different. Everyone's FOB is the exact same. 
The only, like, legitimate differences between people's FOBs is whether they have traps turned on or off, and how well equipped their guards are. Like, overall, like, I, I, I don't mind the whole invasion mechanic that comes with FOBs, but what I do mind is that it gave Konami a way to input microtransactions into the game. Without FOBs, I probably wouldn't have had to wait two in-game hours for items to develop, and I also probably wouldn't be running out of fuel so quickly. Like, are you fucking serious? This is literally Farmville Metal Gear Edition! And I think the worst part is that someone actually paid to make this go faster. Someone actually bought two extra FOBs for 40 Amerabucks. The absolute madman. Like, in general, FOBs did not need to be in this game. <laughs> And you know what else honestly did not need to be in this game? Mother Base. <laughs> Here's a detailed list of all the things you can do on Mother Base. Wow, it's nothing. And this is the only one that actually serves a purpose gameplay-wise. <laughs> it, it's useless. Mother Base is fucking useless. <sighs> Wow, I, I can walk around on the deck and look at my soldiers, then smack them to boost morale by 0.1%. Oh, hey, let's go down and visit Anthony Birch and stare at him! Good morning, little Miss Isis. How are you doing today? Here's a picture of you when you weren't composed of nothing but ashes. But she's an illusion. I have scoffies with lunch, not real. Not real. No, no, all my name is Anthony Birch. Birch. Means, Jack. Jack. I'm innocent! I'm innocent! I'm innocent. Exquisite it's revenge. Oh, man, it's a wish you're not a dog snake. It doesn't make any fucking sense. You know, story has always been a really weird selling point for you when it comes to Metal Gear. I think I must have watched, like, every single trailer for this game at least a dozen times each, and then overanalyzed and attempted to decipher just what the hell was going on in them. And I think what's most annoying about me trying to actually explain this game's story is that in the grand scheme of things, I actually find it really hard to relate the entirety of this game to the rest of the series. Yes, there's a story, but it feels so stripped down, self-contained, and just disconnected from all the other games. The only real connection it has to the rest of this series is its characters. And, like, even they feel different and distant. None of them have the charm they used to have from the previous games. They all feel so empty. Miller just limps around yelling at people because he's obsessed with revenge. Where Ocelot's eccentric personality is nowhere to be found. Most of your interactions with both of these guys come in the form of orders over the radio. And since you can't actually go inside of Mother Base, you never actually get to see them outside of that radio chatter. And you only actually see them in cutscenes. And hey, you hear a lot of Ocelot and Miller in these missions, but if there was any character I wanted to hear less of this time around, it would be Huey, cause oh my god. It's your fault! They're dead because of you! The more that little faggot opened his mouth, I just wanted him to stop opening it. Like, how'd you go from being a pretty cool guy to an absolute cuck? It's a wolf, not a dog, Snake! Why, you're killing your old men, Snake! Uh, because they're fucking infected. They're gonna die anyways. God, God, how dense are you? I'm shooting your own men. That's not the big boss I knew. Then there are other characters like the third child and the man on fire. I was just thinking, man, there's got to be more to these characters than meets the eyes. What's their backstory? What the hell's going on? Like, there's got... No, it, it's just Psycho Mantis. And that's just Vulgan. Driven by revenge. I even thought Skullface was gonna be some, like, negative aspect of Big Boss's psyche brought up by all his PTSD, which made him turn into this, like, warmongering general that he was in Metal Gear 1. No. He, he just wants revenge for his homo. That's it. All, all these villains are just so one-dimensional. And the, the one time that I imagined was supposed to be this serious moment just turned into a fucking meme. Such a lust for revenge! <laughs> okay, then there's the the missing link, the big reveal that you're not actually playing as Big Boss. You're playing as his phantom, who was once the medic enlisted in MSF nine years prior to the events of the game. And, well, you know, to be honest, I actually fucking love that. Mostly because 
I was amazed that people, including myself, basically theorized and guessed this ending over two years ago. I, I was fucking ecstatic when I got to the last few sections of the game, and then that truth pension popped up. I was just... Like, mind blown. And I was just sitting there. I was like, that's amazing. That's so cool. But what about that whole thing with Liquid? Like, he stole Salander? Oh. Oh, 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 it was cut from the final game? Oh, there, there was supposed to be a third chapter? Oh. So, the missing link is Venom Snake. That's it. Oh, okay. I guess. See, like, this whole Chapter 3 fiasco... It, it's, it, it was actually one of the reasons, along with the whole MGO thing, it was why it took so long to make this video. While I was waiting for MGO to come out, I was hoping, like, from the bottom of my heart, maybe, maybe, just maybe, someone will unlock Chapter 3. Maybe it's hidden in the game files. That, that has to be it. There has to be more. But no. That's it. It's just unfinished. The missing link was that there were two big bosses. That's it. You know, just part of me still hopes right now that that really isn't the missing link. That maybe someone will do some crazy bullshit with that whole FOB nuke ending. But it's like, it's almost been like half a year since this game's released. And so, I, I, I've just like lost hope. I, I just doubted something will happen. What? It, it, like, it, I mean, if it were true and there was some third unlockable chapter... Like, I, I always hope for a third air playable area along with it. Like, like a new snow area or something. And, yeah, I, okay, I get it. That's stupid, because Mother Base is, like, somewhere around here in Senegal. Fuck. Then there's Africa over here, and then Afghanistan's up here. So, there's some snow over here. It could have worked, man. I, I want to believe. Like, imagine being up in the mountains around Mount Everest sneaking around in the snow. Shit would be totally awesome, man. And you'd also have, like, a shitload more side-ups. Yeah, you'd have a bunch of side-ups. Woo, yeah, I to totally want that. But, you know, hey. All those side-ups may be repetitive as fuck. But at the end of the day, look, I, I still really enjoyed Metal Gear Solid V. Like, a lot. And, like, the reason for that being is that even though it may have been an unfinished game... The part of the game that I did play, it was just, it was super polished, and it was just, it was just so fucking fun. Like, it was, it was good. Like, Metal Gear Solid V, The Phantom Pain, it really isn't that bad of a game. It's just a disappointing one. I'm innocent! <laughs>